Okay. Next, similarly, we can also do Poisson distribution. But in the Poisson distribution, we will say like uh, how to actually uh, one figure we can use to index multiple figures or like in one figure we can plot multiple figures as subplots. Okay, so here I'm creating uh, subplots and now I'm specifying one comma four. That means what I'm trying asking Python to do is I want four figures in one row. It's like a one cross four matrix and uh, four figures I want which are ad placed adjacent to each other. And uh, the and the command to get the poison sample generated is you just need to invoke this function random dot poison by passing the lambda value and how many samples you want it will generate that many samples. Okay, now I am going to decide what should be the size of my figure and that figure size is mentioned here and now I am going to draw the histogram of this data sample at the first element in my array of 1 cross 4 like I, I have declared to get 4 figures and now the first figure I want, I want to put my first figure in the first position and for that I am going to use this ax equals to ax0 and then tell plot the histogram of x to this function histplot. Okay, let us first get that. So, and now you can set the label here y label as count and your x label as x and this one is the figure that corresponds to it. And similarly if you want to uh, generate data according to another lambda parameters and if you see its histogram but you want it to be the second element in your array you have to just use set ax equals to ax1 when you pass the argument to the hist plot. Similarly you can do uh, you can generate third and fourth plot in that case the only thing you want to do is like yeah whichever data you generate you generate and then specify that uh, handler number of that figure uh, to a hist plot to generate this plot. So here we wanted uh, four figures placed adjacent to each other and uh, that is what we got on here. Okay, so this is about basic distributions functions that are available in uh, Python, I just talked about a basic normal distribution, exponential distribution, gamma and beta distributions. So you can play with other distributions. Uh, the, usually these Python libraries are very well documented. So just to go and uh, play around it. Okay. Now we will briefly touch upon how to apply or how to use Python in some of our other tests we did. We will go into talk about hypothesis testing here. If you recall in hypothesis testing we wanted to check whether a null hypothesis is true or not and for that uh, we come up with the decision criteria right and based on the decision we accept or reject the null hypothesis. Okay, here I am interested in, in comparing performance of vehicles when they use diesel or petrol. Okay, so I think uh, this petrol, I don't know, they use simply the word gas here. So maybe we'll just uh, say diesel and uh, gas here. So this uh, data set, so for the, to understand this, we are going to use a data set, which is a 1985 Watts automotive yearbook 
the column names here specifies what is the data type it is for example what make yeah so the column are like a descriptions like for example the column could be make which provides the manufacture of the vehicle and uh, the column number of cylinder gives explanation about how number how many cylinders are there in the engine and the column peak rpm gives what is the maximum revolution per minute like that okay so in this we are going to compare whether the performance of diesel and gas vehicles are going to be the same or not and uh, we are going to do that using this data here so to play with data we are going to use this pandas and uh, use numpy to see some visualization we use matplotlib and also to some st statistics we use this uh, scipy stats uh, package and from that we use this t test particularly okay so let's execute this and then let's read the file and as we discussed yesterday when i read this file i will see the first five rows with description about the uh, headers and uh, the data in it up to five rows and this info will give me a brief summary of all the columns I have there are looks like there are about seven columns here sorry eight here and they have non-null values here okay so they have all the about uh, this count 205 So okay, there are eight columns. Okay, and that is saying there are 205 entries in here, which are indexed from 0 to 2, 204, and all these columns have some values. That's why this is uh, all of it is showing 205 as a null, non-null values. Okay, now if you want to check there is any missing values in it, like for example, if there is no missing value, either that place would have been left empty or they would have put a question mark and since it is saying here do not find null values maybe uh, there is a question mark if there is a data missing there so let's see this i what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to find in columns checking in each columns if there is any question mark there so for that I am going to define this variable column and uh, taking it through all possible columns and under each column I am checking if any of this uh, value is, is a question mark. So to check that we have used this function uh, value count and telling what is the value we are looking into okay and this will give us how many times question mark is appearing in columns and that is printed here so notice that uh, this looks like few lines of code but this could be very compactly written like this in one line okay so in make column there are none which have question mark fuel type also there is none and in horsepower the horsepower there are two with question mark like that okay now you will want to remove this missing values so to missing values first we identified the columns where the values are missing those are horsepower peak time and price so we have put uh, the values uh, question uh, replace the question mark by false here and now if you again can describe and now everything is a value here now we can count the statistics like mean standard deviations and all okay now what we want to do is 
we want to now look into their mileage so we want to look into their highway mileage so and i want to look into the vehicles which are gas and diesel type here i so i will look into all the columns which were uh, all the vehicles which are running on gas and list their uh, highway mileage so mpg stands for miles per gallon uh, and then again for uh, fuel the vehicles which are running on diesel I again list their mileage have a mileage and let us see when I do this I am going to get this low the first uh, okay maybe I am printing too much here yeah first I printed this gas so there are, looks like a gas there are about 185 element uh, vehicles which are running on gas and the second part corresponding to this print which is showing me that there are about 185 okay this just did not show me the length here but uh, when I look into the length of the diesel it is showing me that is uh, 20. So, here I have this diesel vehicles, sorry the vehicles running on gas are about 185 and the one which are running on diesel are about 20 here. Now I store them separately in a new data frame which the gas is stored in a data frame DFA and uh, the diesel one showed in uh, DFB here. See notice that storing getting extracting the column information is very hand, very easy in python all you have to do is first look into all the data where view, fuel type is gas and when you pass it to only those indexes to your data frame which is storing all the data it will only return those datas and not the others and similarly uh, here for the diesel case. Now what I want to do is I want to take 20 samples from each one of these samples and uh, use it to do my hypothesis testing whether diesel and gas have the uh, similar mileage. Okay, Now you see that when I do the describe both, uh, okay before that uh, yeah to achieve that uh, uh, 20 getting 20 samples. I am going to use a rand function. Uh, first, the random function is seeded so that you get the same um, value of this randomness. And uh, in the first, I will get 20 samples from the DFA and another 20 samples from DFB. Now when I look into the summary of this df120 you will see that there are 20 uh, elements in that and we are seeing this mean and median okay and the highway also has uh, similar values populated here okay this is you can also see. Now often these are like just like statistic count maybe one can want to use it pictorially. For that one can use the box plot here. The box plot to do this we are going to use box plot function in this SNS library and uh, the plotting for that we are going to use this command. So x is simply going to be the fuel type we have to just say. Um, x is uh, the string is fuel type y is highway mpg so highway mpg here and uh, x is uh, fuel type here and the data we are going to give is this concatenated value of df1 and df2 now when i plot this you see this 1 2 3 4 5 kind of bars. The bottom one here corresponding to the lowest value that is the minimum value 
which is 22 here and uh, the middle one so the second one here is going to correspond to the 25th quartile of the data and the middle one is the 50th quartile which is also the median and this is like a 75th quartile and the last one here going to represent the maximum value okay so now we have named this figure as uh, box plot highway mpg for gas and diesel okay now based on this you see that if you compare this just uh, take the mean it gives uh, a sense that diesel has a better efficiency right has uh, you know, better uh, mileage now we want to test this now our hypothesis is we want to test the hypothesis our average hypothesis um, mileage of both of them are same and my alternative hypothesis is they are not now i want to test it uh, and i want to use the t-test for it so if you recall in hypothesis testing we uh, accept or reject by comparing to a threshold and now we want to uh, first compute the statistics and the p-value of that statistics. So to compute the t-states I am going to use this t-test uh, ind which is the t-test we had already defined the t-test right we did we define t-test here before no. So this t test okay is a function which takes the two data sets that we want to compare and here equal variance tells whether I should be taking the variance of these two tests to be the same or not. Here we have set it false so this will not take this uh, data to be the same variance and recall that when we are talking t test it is un assumed that the data is following a, a Gaussian distribution. Now this function is going to return me two values stat and p stat will be the value of the statistics that we compute and p is its probability that uh, statistics is going to be larger than some number if i by default that is like i said the significance level is set to be 0 0.05 so we see that now p we compare against this significance level 0 0.05 if it is true we say that okay null hypothesis is accepted and otherwise we are going to say that it is rejected. Now it so happens that in this example p value turns out to be minus 2.229 and whereas the p value is 0 0.037 and clearly 0 0.307 is going to be smaller than 0 0.05 so we are going to see that the null hypothesis is going to be rejected that is the performance of these two are not the same. Like this you can do here I just showed you that uh, let me see why is this happening I had some more things here yeah so here based on this you can uh, uh, yeah here with the 20 random samples generated you concluded that yes this uh, your uh, null hypothesis that both are the same performance is rejected. Now you can do this again uh, but uh, this time instead of uh, not necessarily taking 20 samples for both maybe you can take all the possible samples available for each of this and compare and uh, you can uh, do the same process here I am not going to go into the details but again to get a sense here you can first uh, put the blocks plot and again here when I take all the data also like looks like again diesel is performing better and uh, then you can try to test this and uh, when you do this test at significance level 0 0.05 you again the null hypothesis is rejected here. So you see that like before we applying this uh, hypothesis test sometimes uh, the uh, visualization gives more idea about how the data looks like. So I want to quickly spend one or minute on this various visualization tools. So that's why data visualization is important and uh, this uh, Seaborn tool provides a pretty good functions to do that. So one function which we already used is histogram when you have a data you can uh, 
see that like for example earlier I do the, this uh, Pokemon data right in the Pokemon data let's say I want to see how this uh, attack column looks like I can generate the histogram like this and also there are other plots called uh, scatter plots box plot we just saw and there is another things while in plots these are other good visualization techniques I encourage all of you to play with them okay so with that we we'll stop but uh, this Python is a very comes with a very rich rich libraries so you can readily use it to do good uh, statistic analysis I hope whatever we discuss is uh, going to be helpful to you okay